Warm greetings to you, my dear friends. I'm Nick Connolly, the pastor of the Matawan United Methodist Church in Aberdeen, New Jersey. Welcome to Psalms at Midweek. Every Wednesday, we've been presenting a psalm following a numerical sequence, which began almost three years ago with Psalm 1, and it's closing three years later in a few weeks with Psalm 150. These psalms at the end are a cluster of praise songs. They gather in all of the energy of all of the psalms, of all of the scripture, to give praise to God. It's universal. It's whole. Maybe the best image, or one of the best images that I could offer, was the total lunar eclipse that my wife and I we're privileged to see this morning at about 5.15 in the morning, a glow, reddish glow, as the earth passed between the sun and the moon. What a feeling of unity. There we are, this wonderful globe that's surrounding the sun, the moon surrounding the earth. It's kind of a universal image of oneness. And that's something that we all need, isn't it? During these days, this particular day is election day in the United States in the afternoon, preparing for the Wednesday psalm that I'll be offering. So we need to just collect ourselves and gather ourselves so that we can appreciate what's it like to just praise God in all aspects of our life. Thank you for joining in this video. Be sure to put a like at the end of the service, or right now you can go right to the, to the link on YouTube. It's important because it lets others know that this is important. This comes as a resource in the Bible through the seasons, a three-year journey through the Bible. And as we come near the end of this three-year cycle, knowing that the next solar lunar eclipse will be in 2025, three years from now. Here we are in a symbolism of threes, the Trinity, and gathering us all here together. You'll hear, just as you did now, you hear the sound of participation of our African gray bird. <clears throat> He'll chime in with his chirps, uh, perhaps throughout this video, this part of the household that we have here. So welcome, I'm glad you're here, and let's pause now to become quiet and still in about a half a minute of just pure silence. Relax, surrender, the chair or whatever it is that's supporting you, you can trust, you can lean into it, sit back on it. Just as we can trust that chair, you can trust the Lord whom you're resting back on so that we can come together in unity and peace. Let's pause now for about 30 seconds of relaxed silence together. The Bible Through the Seasons is a three-year way of reading the entire Bible, and Wednesdays we dedicate to the Psalms. To introduce each Psalm and each of the readings, I've developed what I call one-minute fire starters. These are ways of engaging your imagination and your soul in the coming reading that hopefully will launch you out into a better grasp and appreciation of the Scripture. The fire starter for Psalm 148 is entitled at the heart of creation. Preoccupation with something or someone, obsession with a thought or habit, all these constrict the wide-angle view of creation which we need to maintain. The psalmist has this perspective. At the very heart of matter, 
more intimate than the bustling movement of atoms and molecules, lies the creative activity of God lifting everything, animal and person, into existence. It is there, at the deepest core, that each article of creation is in praise of its creator. From the heights of heaven where God dwells, every creative thing finds its master image, the dust of the earth, as toner in a copier, arranges itself according to this image. Enter into God's creation at the inspiration of the psalm for today. Find your life with all its details, thoughts, and feelings set against the background of creation, ever singing praise to God. And now we come to Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his host. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Feel the exuberance of this psalm. Feel the exuberance that breaks through all of the resistances that the sacred writer might have been experiencing until it just pours itself forth in praise. From verse 7. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command, mountains and hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above heaven and earth. He has raised up a horn for his people, praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. There's a fascinating article appearing in the current New York Times entitled, Are Trees Talking Underground? It's a scientific expression that's disputed by other scientists that trees and their roots communicate nutrients and fungi with other roots of trees in a cooperative way. It's just one of the ways in which science is helping us to understand what it is that the unfolding of the mysteries of creation can tell us about the beauty of it all. I want to share with you uh, about Francis of Assisi. He's a saint that lived from 1181 to 1226. He was a mystic. He must have been using Psalm 148 or other Psalms of praise to create what is purported to be one of the first pieces of literature in Italian. It's the Canticle of the Sun. And in it, he has this familiar brother-sister relationship with all of creation. Uh, according to the tradition, it was first sung in its entirety by Francis with his brothers Angelo and Leo, two of the original companions. And the final verse, praising Sister Death, was added just a few minutes before he passed away. The artist Sigoli, in 1597 and a few years after that, created this beautiful work of art. It captures the way in which Francis surrenders in love of creation and love for his God. Um, so you have the psalm, you have the canticle of the sun, and you have also an adaptation of that canticle by William Draper 
from 1855, who lived until 1933, in a hymn that we, so many of us know, called All Creatures of Our God and King. I'm including just the conclusion minute or so of a celebration of 150 years of the Episcopal Church in Southern California uh, by a group from Disney Hall. I hope you enjoy it, and I hope that you can go further into that beautiful hymn. There's an image I'm posting of Queen Elizabeth and her son Charles, now King Charles, and members of the royal family singing this hymn in Westminster Abbey. So I'm thankful. So I'm thankful for all that's happened from the eclipse that we saw this morning, my wife and I, where all of creation, as far as the earth is concerned, is gathered into this lovely, lovely uh, image of red as the sunrises and sunsets gather themselves in all those red hues and project themselves onto the moon. So thank you for joining with us. I appreciate your presence to these Wednesday Psalms and all of the offerings that we may get at the Madawan United Methodist Church. Uh, be blessed. Thank you. Join with us this Sunday as again we continue the final Sundays of the season of Kingdom Tide, culminating on November 20th with the Feast of Christ the King. God bless you. May peace be in your heart. <laughs>